Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a newer game. Uh, this is a game that was actually a part of another Kickstarter, and you're going to have to forgive me because I don't remember which game or which Kickstarter that was. It might have been the Orleans Kickstarter, uh, but definitely from Tasty Minstrel Games, one of their Kickstarter projects. Uh, this was one you could add on, and it was called Bottle Cap Vikings. Uh, this is a Rondell game uh, with a... a changing rondelle. The rondelle will be different every time you play the game because it's a variable setup in terms of the, the preparation for the game. Uh, the order of actions and the different sides of the tiles will be different. Uh, regardless, it's a rondelle game in which you play a viking trying to achieve victory on one of two ways. You can either go for victory points or you can go by advancing your tech tree to the end. Uh, so real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box. We'll see how the game plays and then we'll come back at the end and get my opinion on Bottle Cap Vikings. So here you can see the components all set up for a four player game of Bottle Cap Vikings. In the center here is our rondelle, which is built up of these uh, movable and interchangeable tiles that you can randomize at the beginning of the game in order to randomize what actions will be available in your rondelle. And they also get placed out in a random order. Uh, this bottle cap in the middle, which is where the ga game gets its name, uh, has a helper on it in the four-player version of the game, which will have some interaction with special abilities you can get. Uh, and on the lower player number versions of the game, the helper is present, but there's also a Viking, who every time you cross this little red line will cause you to take a damage in the form of Valkyries, which can cause you to lose things throughout the game. Uh, so this gets randomized. Uh, in the four-player game, it's, it's like this. Uh, in every other player version of the game, it's the other side, but the outside actions will change from game to game. Uh, each player also has their own little player board here. And this player board on it has a tech tree. Throughout the game, as you acquire money uh, and you acquire Viking hats or helmets uh, by acquiring glory, you'll have the option of upgrading your tech tree, choosing a path as you move up this tech tree. Uh, and you'll see that the abilities as you get them, for example, at the beginning of the game, it costs you two money to move up. And for example, every time you get coins, you get an extra coin. Or every time you get wood, you get an extra wood. The next time you upgrade, it will cost you four gold coins, and you must have at least one Viking helmet, which are represented on the board at certain victory point numbers. At three, you have one helmet. At five, you have two. At six, you have three. And you'll never need any more than three helmets. Uh, so as you move up, the abilities get a little bit better. For example, every time you land on the helper, you can lose a wound. Or every time you get a glory, you get a wood. Or every time you move, you may move two extra spaces, and when you get this ability, you get a Viking helmet. Uh, sometimes you don't count wounds, sometimes when you pass people you may steal their goods, and the final one, when you get all the way to the top, if you're the first person there, you'll win the game. Uh, the other way to win the game is to get 10 victory points. So you're trying to get 10 glory, uh, and each player in this case is going to start the game with some resources and three glory, so they already have one Viking helmet. Uh, the variable resources are given by the rulebook at the start of the game. On a player's turn, you're going to basically be moving your ship around this rondelle in a clockwise manner. So you're moving around in a turn of the clock. So right now, our first player is green, and they could choose where they wanted to start out on the rondelle. Uh, anywhere is fine. So let's say our players decided to go like this. Now you may move one to three spaces on your turn. Uh, now, if you land on someone else where they're already at, you're going to draw these Valkyrie wounds. You're going to pick one wound for yourself, uh, and your opponent that you landed on, and every opponent that you land with, is going to take a wound for themselves and place it by their board. So you'll see that this player drew a red Valkyrie, whereas this player drew a gray one. In this area right here, there are 17 gray and five red Valkyries. They're the same for the purposes of how they damage you throughout the game, but Resolving them triggers when five, four of the five red ones are drawn. Then you'll resolve what happens with the Valkyries, the damage that you take, uh, and then you'll place them all back into the board. Now this damage is relatively severe. If you only have one Valkyrie, you take no damage, you get rid of your guy, your Valkyrie, it's fine, no big deal. Uh, if you have two damage, you actually lose two gold. So you'll see that we have a gold tracker, a wood tracker, and a glory tracker around our boards. Uh, right now everybody has a couple of wood or some gold or whatever it might be. Uh, actually, this player has too much stuff, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, 
they would have to lose two gold and then they would put all of their damage back into the box. Anybody that had three damage would lose a glory, so a victory point, They would, and then they would put all of their tokens back in the box. And whoever has four or more of these tokens when it resolves is going to lose a glory and they're going to lose the two gold and then put all their things back. So you could lose victory points or gold or a combination of the two for having these wounds. So you don't want to have a lot of them when the fourth red one is drawn from this box. So moving one to three spaces, you will eventually land on your space. And each of these tiles tells you exactly what action you would take. They may be a little hard to see in the video, but most of them are going to be gaining or trading resources for some type of benefit. So for example, this one is gain one gold. Uh, remember, if you have the ability of gaining an extra gold, you would gain that extra gold then. Then if you have the most or equal to the most wounds, you would gain an extra gold for this one. Or this one is you can go down X number of wood and gain X number plus one of gold, so a trade. Or this one is if you have three gold, or you go up three gold, but for each Viking helmet you have, so the more glory you have, you're going to lose one of those coins. Or trade in gold for X plus one wood. This one is allowing you to trade in wood, or to get wood, and to get an extra wood if you have the most wounds. And then you have a tile that always lets you get rid of wounds. There's always a way to get rid of your wounds. So this one says you may go down a wood and get it and turn in three of your wounds. Uh, Additionally, you may go down three more wood to get, to get rid of all of your wounds. So three wood or one wood for three wounds or all of your wounds. Get rid of some wounds. The final two spaces here are move up on your tech tree and trade in wood and gold for victory points. Moving up on your tech tree, as we discussed earlier, requires that you have a certain number of glory in order to gain these Viking helmets. Once you have that glory and the required amount of gold, you may move up on this tech tree to gain another ability, keeping all of the previous ones. The final space, oh, if you move up to the final space, as I said earlier, you win the game. The final thing you can do is trade in, in this case, two wood and a gold for one glory. And you can do it again, two wood and a gold, but also take a wound in order to get a second glory. So you'll see you'll be getting a lot of resources and trying to trade them in for glory. That glory will give you Viking helmets, which you can use to advance your tech tree. But if you just want to go straight for a glory win, if you get to 10 glory, you win the game. Now. The other side of these player boards has different tech trees for each Viking. Uh, so you can use either the same tech tree if you want everyone to be on the same level, or the different tech trees if you would like to have different progressions for each player. But overall, the goal is going to be to best manipulate the use of this wheel in order to advance yourself in the game, gain gold, wood, and glory, advance your tech tree, and either be the first one to finish that tech tree or to get 10 glory and win the game. Well, there you have it. That is Bottle Cap Vikings. Uh, this is an interesting title to me because it's in the vein of games uh, that I would usually play, but it's definitely what I would call um, a filler type game, a short game, right? It's a very short game. It lasts maybe a half an hour, uh, but it has mechanics or mechanisms built into it that I like in my main, you know, meaty games that I like to play. Uh, and so this is a very nice feel for a short game for me. I really like the feel of it. I like the variable setup. I like the fact that you have different sides of the Viking board, so you can have different uh, special abilities or different pro progression abilities on that tech tree as you go up, and that you have two different options in how to progress towards the end of the game. Uh, either the victory point, straight victory point win, or the advancement of that tech tree. Uh, furthermore, I do like the fact that you can intentionally set somebody back by trying to hit them with a the Valkyries. Uh, you know, make, making sure that they draw more tiles and have a further penalty or better or worse penalty when those Valkyries do indeed trigger on uh, causing them to lose victory points or whatever it might be. Uh, so overall, I think this is an interesting concept for a small game. Uh, will it stay in my collection? Probably not, but that's not really the game's fault. This is the, the um, kind of contribution to that is that I wouldn't really bring a half an hour game to the table very often. Uh, and if I do, it's probably going to be a card game. Now, for those of you that have shorter gaming periods, uh, or you like lighter games, uh, or you're just looking for a Euro-y feel to a short game for your collection, I definitely would say check this out. Production quality is good, concepts are interesting, game is fun, uh, just not one that fits a slot in my collection. So, uh, if that sounds good to you, check it out, Bottle Cap Vikings. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.